Happy New Year everybody and welcome to the first tutorial of 2023. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through the process of creating this glitch text animation. But before we begin, quick disclaimer, this is going to be more of an advanced tutorial than the usual ones I make on the channel, but don't worry, I'm going to explain each step along the way. So let's begin. First step, make sure your timeline is 1920 by 1080 at 23976 or 24 frames per second. Open the effects tab and under toolbox effects, grab the fusion composition. Close out and move the playhead to 2 seconds and 12. Grab the right side of the composition and drag it over to the playhead. Now let's jump into Fusion. Let's move Media Out down and add a text node. Link it to the Media Out and let's type in our text. It's going to be Glitch. And I'm going to change the font. You can change it to whatever font you want. I'm going to go with Akira Expanded and increase its size. And also I'm going to go to Transform and size and increase the size on the y-axis a little bit just to make it taller. I increased the y-axis size just to make the font taller so it's not mandatory for you to do this. Now in the first phase we're going to create the look of the glitch effect. Click on the text node, shift spacebar and search for prism blur. The prism blur node is responsible for the RGB split. Control or command and scroll up to zoom. Let's bring the blur strength to zero because we don't need any blur in our effect. Reduce the aberration distance and bring it as close as possible to the font and increase the aberration strength to the max. Okay, let's adjust the aberration distance a little bit. Perfect. Next, shift spacebar and add JPEG damage. JPEG damage is responsible for the texture of the glitch effect. As you can see, if I increase the resolution, it gets really pixelated. So we're gonna keep the resolution around a value of two, increase the quality, and increase the frequency scale. Play around with the settings and find what you like. These are good for me. Next, the final node for the look. Shift spacebar and let's search for scan lines. The scan lines node simulates the old CRT TV or CRT monitor horizontal lines when the signal was poor. So let's increase line frequency and line sharpness a little bit and line width, let's decrease it. Good. Now let's arrange the nodes a little bit. I like to create a top down and left to right tree. This also helps with node tree organization. Now let's move on to phase two where we're going to focus on the movement of the glitch effect. So let's bring in a transform node, keep it selected and click on the rectangle, lift it up and shift spacebar and add a duplicate. And we're going to use the first duplicate node. Add. connect it make sure the rectangle is connected to the yellow arrow of the duplicate select the rectangle node and decrease the width so we have a thin vertical rectangle let's place it to the left at the beginning of the text click on transform and move the center y-axis up as you can see it's already starting to slice the text now click on the duplicate node and this node is responsible for duplicating whatever it's connected to it. So in this case, it's going to duplicate the rectangle. This way, we don't need to create 50 rectangles if we need them. We just create one and duplicate it 50 times. So in our case, I'm going to add four copies. And on center X, I'm going to move to the right until I get the desired look. Actually, let's increase the copies. Let's give it a value of six finally and adjust the center X. Now I'm going to repeat the last step of rectangle duplicate and transform, but we're going to switch it to horizontal splitting. Now let's shape the second rectangle. This time I'm going to decrease the height and increase the width until it covers or goes over the text and bring it up. Back to transform and I'm going to move the center X to the right. Now on to duplicate, I'm going to create four copies and on center Y, I'm going to move them down. That means move them to the left. Now select all nodes, move them up a little bit and grab a background node. Disconnect the transform two and connect the background to the media out. And now connect the transform two to the background, creating a merge node. I'm gonna leave the background to solid color and black and move to the third phase, the animation phase. First, we're gonna animate the prism blur and make sure your playhead is at frame zero, then set a keyframe for aberration distance and aberration strength. Let's move to frame 15. 
and decrease completely both values. Next, JPEG damage. Again, playhead at frame zero. Set a keyframe for quality, resolution, and frequency scale. Let's go this time to frame 13. Increase the quality to the max. Decrease the resolution completely and reset the frequency scale by using the dot under the slider. Next up, scan lines. Let's go to frame zero. Set a keyframe for line frequency, line sharpness, and line width. And we're going to go to frame 13. Decrease the line frequency. Reset the line sharpness using the dot under the slider. And do the same thing for line width. Now, on to transform one. Playhead at frame zero. Set a keyframe for center Y axis. And I'm going to move to frame nine. Double click the value and enter 0.5. Now to transform two, playhead at frame zero, keyframe four, center x axis, move to frame nine, double click the value and type in 0.5. Now let's reset the playhead at frame zero and play it back. Now with the playhead at frame zero, click on transform one and uncheck use size and aspect. And let's decrease the size of X and of Y. Set keyframes and let's move to frame seven and reset them back to their initial value. Now let's do the same thing for transform two. Uncheck the use size and aspect, but this time I'm going to increase the size of X and decrease the size of Y. Set keyframes, move to frame eight and reset the values. Let's check the animation. Next step, click on the text node. Make sure you're in the text tab. Right click the text box and add a follower modifier. Now let's switch to the modifiers. Now modifiers are an extra set of tools that you can use in your text animation. And first one is timing. Here we're going to change the order from left to right. This means the animation will begin from left to right and set a delay of 0.5. The higher the value, the slower the delay. The lower the value, the faster the delay. So for us, 0.5 is enough. Next, we're gonna go to transform, move the playhead at frame 15, set a keyframe for spacing at value one, move back to frame zero, and decrease the spacing until the letters are almost mashed one into the other. That's good. Move to frame seven, increase the spacing just a little bit, and let's reset and play it back. Perfect. Now back to frame 15 and let's go to shading, close properties because we're not going to use it and open position. Now set a keyframe for softness, X, Y and glow. And for position offset X and Y. It will open this path with some extra animation properties, but we're not going to use it. So let's close it. Double click to close it and double click to open follower one move back to frame zero and now i'm going to move the offset x position to the left but just a little bit and increase the glow and softness slightly let's play it back let's move back to frame zero and move offset x a little bit more now let's play it back now I'm going to adjust the prism blur values a little bit in the keyframes. I'm going to go to frame three and increase the strength and the distance. Let's play it back. Perfect. Now phase four, the end of the animation. I'm going to start with transform one and move the playhead to frame 30. Set a keyframe for X size and Y size and also for center Y. Move to frame 40 and decrease the X size, also the Y sizes, and move the center Y axis down just a little bit, back to frame 30. Now same process for transform two, set a keyframe for center X and X size and Y size, but this one I'm going to end it at frame 43. Decrease the X size, decrease the Y size, and move center X to the right. Next, click on the text node. Let's go to the modifiers again. Frame 30, keyframe for softness, X, Y, and glow, and offset X. Let's move to frame 38, increase the softness a little bit, 
and the glow. Let's move to frame 45 and move the offset to the right. Back, click on transform, set a keyframe for spacing. Let's move to frame 42 and decrease the spacing. That's perfect. Let's play it back just one time. Perfect. Back to frame 30 and click on prism blur. Set a keyframe for aberration distance strength and this time also blur strength. Let's move to frame 36, increase the blur just a little bit. Move to frame 41, increase the distance, and increase the strength as well. Actually, let's decrease the distance. Perfect. Back to frame 30. Let's go to JPEG damage, keyframe for quality, resolution, and frequency scale. Let's go to frame 35, increase the quality, increase the resolution, also the frequency scale. Now move to frame 40, decrease the frequency scale, and decrease the resolution as well. Now back to frame 30, click on scan lines, keyframe for line frequency, line sharpness, and line width. Move to frame 37, increase the line frequency, increase the line sharpness, decrease the line width. Okay, let's go back to prism blur, and at frame 38, increase the aberration strength and distance. Now let's play it back. Perfect. Let's go back to text and modifiers and shading and increase the offset X even more. Now let's move to frame 40 and with the text now selected, click on the rectangle to create a rectangle mask. Click on invert to invert it. Increase its width and height a little bit and let's move it out of the frame. Set a keyframe for center X and move to frame 47. Now let's bring the mask in. Click on media out to have a better view and let's play it back. Good. Click on the text node and move the playhead to frame one and go to shading. Decrease the opacity and set a keyframe. Move two frames to frame three and increase the opacity. Now let's play it back. Okay, select the text node again. Let's bring the playhead somewhere in the middle. Go back to the text and let's decrease the size just a little bit. Now let's see how it looks. And now the last step in this whole animation process, refining the keyframes. Let's close out the inspector. Box select every node and let's move them to the left and open the spline menu. Let's make some space by dragging it to the left and Start with rectangle 3. Control or command F to bring everything into view. Box, select everything, and press S on the keyboard to smooth it out. Let's move to text. Control or command F. And for the text, I want to smooth out just a few of the keyframes. So first, let's select these two. Press S. Select these. Press S. Select this one here. Also press S. This one. Deselect text. And let's go to prism blur box select the first keyframes press s and i'm going to smooth out also these two let's move to jpeg damage and smooth this one smooth this one and these two also select these two near the end and smooth them out as well perfect next up scan lines Select the first keyframes, smooth them out. Let's go to transform, select the first keyframes, smooth them out, and the end keyframes, and smooth them out. And last, transform two, we're gonna do the same. First keyframes, smooth them out. Last keyframes, smooth them out. Now let's go back up to the rectangle, bring it into view, control or command F, Grab the last keyframe, press and hold shift on your keyboard, click on it, and let's move it to the left. Now let's play it back. Perfect. And with this, our final animation is complete. And that is one way of creating glitch text animations in DaVinci Resolve. Now, I want you to remember one thing when it comes to motion graphics, and that is always play with your settings. Even though you follow the tutorial and use the settings from the tutorial, go back and change them mix them up, rearrange them. That way you'll get unique results every time. 
and even if you started with a tutorial, you will end up with your own unique animation. Now, before I go, if you want to learn more text animations in DaVinci Resolve, check out these two videos. And until next time, take care.